Hey, says we're live. What's up, everyone? Aaron Negler here with your Packers Daily Chat on Cheesehead TV's YouTube channel. Good to see everybody in the comments already. Uh, the breaking news right before I went live, obviously, was about the Brewers game being postponed. Uh, the Cardinals apparently have some positive COVID-19 tests. Man, strange days. Strange days we are living in. Um, obviously, the Packers have their own COVID-19 headlines coming off yesterday. Mason Crosby, Jay Sternberger, and Trayvon Hester all placed on the COVID-19 reserve list. I had a lot of questions about what that means. So rather than ramble incoherently about it, I'll, I'm going to read a real quick kind of synopsis of what the COVID-19 reserve list uh, is all about. Uh, specifically, anybody listening to this on the podcast later, so they have some kind of idea. Uh, this new reserve list category was created for a player who either tests positive for COVID-19 or who has been quarantined after having been in close contact with an infected person or persons. If a player falls into either of these categories, their club is required to immediately place the player on the reserve COVID-19 list. Per agreed upon NFL, NFLPA policy, clubs are not permitted to comment on players' medical status other than referring to roster status. In other words, they can't say whether the guy's got it or not. The player himself is more than welcome to and free to share that information with the public, but the team cannot. Um, if a player tests positive for the virus and is asymptomatic, he can be cleared 10 days after the positive test or five days with two negative tests. Players who are exhibiting symptoms are required to be out a minimum of 10 days after the first occurrence of symptoms and 72 hours since symptoms last occurred. So as you can tell, there's a whole bunch of uh, hoops to jump through, uh, dependent on are these guys, do they have it? Uh, were they in an area or with people who do have it and thereby putting themselves at risk, et cetera? Obviously, I'm sure reporting will come out on this as the weekend unfurls. We have more Packers taking more tests today um, as per the agreement between the league and the PA. How it was set up was they would have two days of tests, a day off, and another day of tests. So I, there's a possibility we may get more of these, unfortunately. Hello to everybody in the comments. Good to see everybody. Uh, I think I had a super chat, right? When I logged on, I did. Uh, a. John Hawkins. Hey, Nags. If 12 came over to your place for a drink, would you serve him beer, scotch, or tequila? <laughs> uh, definitely scotch. Uh, as he intimated in his message to me, he's not transitioning to tequila, just mixing things up. And in this house, we drink scotch. Uh, Corey Mansky, how you doing, man? Good morning. Pogs, Bayou Cheeseheads here. And of course, Big B, enjoy the Jaguar. Always good to see the regulars up and at it. Ryan, do you think Ty Summers has any potential as a starting middle linebacker? I mean, I, I, I tend to think it's a long shot, but, you know, hell, we've been surprised before. Guys come out of nowhere. Guys uh, take big jumps, especially from year one to year two. So I'm not going to completely dismiss the possibility. I would tend to think he's probably a lifetime special teamer. That's my hunch. But again, who knows? In this strange offseason where nobody was on the field together, it really is going to come down to a lot of what kind of work these guys did on their own. Obviously, we're not privy to any of that. And maybe he shows up uh, rip roaring ready to go and turn some heads early on in camp, gets more opportunities, and maybe he wins the spot. That's a possibility. I'm not going to hold my breath for that possibility, but it certainly could happen. AJ, good morning. How are you? Carl, good morning. Carry the damn G. That's what I'm talking about. Love the channel. Thanks. Keep it up, brother. Thank you. In the streets. How you doing? Have all the players reported yet? Or was yesterday just the rookies? Uh, no, uh, the, the rookies were the first ones to get tested. Um, and they will be the first ones allowed on a football field, but uh, along with quarterbacks. But uh, no, the veterans have all reported now as well um, and they are going through testing. Who is your front runner for tight end one? Santiago, definitely Jay Sternberger. Yesterday's news notwithstanding. Um, I do think there's a possibility that uh, some kind of combination of Tanyan, Lewis, and Sternberger probably rotate through early on, uh, depending on what kind of personnel packages and play calls Lafleur is looking for. But ultimately, it's going to be Sternberger's job. I have a little doubt of that. <laughs> Ryan up here crying in the club on a Friday morning. Dude, I'm trying to enjoy myself. Ryan chats. I still can't get over the two 2014 NFC Championship game. 
dude, who brought this guy to the party? No, I'm kidding. I mean, but come on. Come on. We don't got enough crap to worry about right now, feel bad about. Brewers game just got canceled. We got Packers players being put on the COVID-19 reserve list. And you're talking about the 2014 NFC Championship game? Come on, dude. You might as well just say Brandon Bostic and tell everyone to go to hell. Good Lord. I uh, hear we made an offer to Snacks. Zachary, I did read that last night. Uh, former Cheesehead TV, Cheesehead TV alum, uh, Ross Uglum, reporting that the Packers made a, quote, competitive offer to Harrison and that he is still weighing his options. Uh, again, I'll be absolutely shocked if he ends up in Green Bay. I'll be pretty surprised, period, if he plays football in 2020. Um, sure, the quotes we've heard from him over the last month or so certainly seem to indicate a man who is – uh, maybe not resigned to, but seriously thinking about his health, his family's health, and whether playing another year is worth the hassle. Um, but yeah, it's always good. What Goody can say when he got the job, going to be in every conversation. I have zero doubt they made an offer and that it was competitive. But like I said, it sure sounds like Snacks is uh, weighing his options and leaning towards not playing. Did I try Bush Light Apple yet? No, I choose life. Why does the NFL make it very difficult to get NFL Red Zone? I don't want a cable contract and Fubo TV is $60 a month. Well, Kevin, got to pay for content. I don't know what to tell you. I, I do, That's the thing I do. I mean, we here at Cheesehead TV, we give you guys tons of free content. But, you know, that stuff doesn't just make itself. People create it. People put it together. Lots of engineers broadcasters, talent, etc. I mean, I don't know what to say. Pay up. Fubo TV is a fucking bargain, dude, for everything you get. Fubo is awesome. Or YouTube TV. Any of those things. You know what? I miss, I do miss PlayStation View. That was the best. But, of course, they canceled it because it was too good a deal. Matt, thank you for the super chat. Morning from the UK. Good morning from New York City. Has there been any talk since COVID about Packers coming over next year? Love Cheese at TV and your daily chats. But Leeds will come to the bridge and trash it. Cry baby Lampard. <laughs> Oh, I have a good friend in England who's a massive Leeds fan. And he literally, when they got, came up, he literally called me. And I was so excited. I was like, hey, what's up? And all he said was, Leeds, 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 Leeds. And then hung up. <laughs> oh, um, no. Mark Murphy did talk about, you know, the fact that they are the only team that hasn't gone over there yet. Um, certainly sounds like he wants it to happen. As he always says, he's never going to give up a home game to make it happen. But I think they'll continue to press other teams to host them in Wembley or wherever. Uh, we'll see. I mean, there's so much to get through at this point. My gosh. we if, if I mean, hell, if we can play a couple football games this year, I'll be happy. If 33 and 87 were working out together and only 87 is on the list, means that he's probably not positive, but was his himself in contact with someone who was. Javier, there's a very, that's a fair reading of things. I would posit and I would caution against trying to sleuth any of this out because there's so much information that we're not privy to. What you're saying makes perfect sense, and I would tend to agree. But in, in this environment, I tend to think that with uh, information being as fluid and as quick as it can be in this day and age, even just guessing about that kind of stuff, I don't know, man. It just seems to like it would instantly taint perceptions and twist uh, how guys are viewed, etc. You know, if they want to come out and offer up that information, great. But if they don't, it's not really my place. Now, there are hard-hitting reporters out there who will say otherwise and go get that info and, hey, rock on, man. But that's just, that ain't my lane. That ain't what I do. EQ jump, Lazard jump, Sternberger jump, Savage jump, and Adams jump. I'm in on it. I love it. I'm happy to be a part of this plan. Let's do it. Dan, what do you think the odds that the reason there is no huge wide receiver draft pick slash major upgrade at the position is that Gutekunst is trying to find a good trade for a star wide receiver and right deal just hasn't come yet? I don't think that has anything to do with it. Um, I think they do like their guys. I don't doubt for a second that Gutekunst is true to his word and is always looking to improve the entire roster, including the wide receiver spot. But I don't think he's sitting back going, I'm just waiting for the right moment to trade for a star wide receiver. Uh, 
you know, I would encourage, I said this yesterday, everyone, every Packers fan to watch the conversation between uh, Chris Sims and uh, Kyle Shanahan that Sims put up yesterday because it, Shanahan does a great job of explaining why uh, the most important thing is having five interchangeables as far as five eligibles and what positions they play, whether it's wide receiver, running back, tight end, is really immaterial. And trust me, as the Packers proved last year, winning four fucking games in a row without Devontae Adams, they know what they're doing in that regard. Now, would you like a bit more talent at wide receiver? Maybe some more experience at tight end? Uh, a, a shifty third down pass catching back, say, out of the backfield? Sure, absolutely. We'd love to add all those pieces. But right now, the Packers have a really good collection of talent. They, they're going to be able to win a ton of football games with it. I think people just get so fixated on wide receivers, A, because of a decade of Mike McCarthy, spread offenses, et cetera, and then B, yes, fantasy football. People just see fantasy lists and rankings and blah, 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 and then they look at the Packers' depth chart and they think, I only know Devontae Adams. Now, he's one of the best in the game, but outside of that, there's not a lot of guys who have made their name, who have had a ton of production in the league. And so the perception is that the Packers don't have anything there, which couldn't be further from the truth. That's all. Uh, I've gotten over fourth and 26. All good, Ryan. I'm glad, Ryan. I'm glad. I mean, you're just going to come up in here talking about all the bad crap, man. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I'm just going to think all the good stuff. Mm. Brandy, that is an excellent question. Does Dylan have pass catching skills? Well, he didn't get a chance to exhibit them at BC. The Packers swear blind that he can do it, but they swore blind that Dexter Williams could do it, and he got to camp and really couldn't. So he undoubtedly will be given those opportunities, and I think that's a big, big part of his getting on the field. Not only pass catching, but being able to pass protect. If he shows up in those two areas, he'll probably be on the field more sooner rather than later. But pass catching is a big, big question mark. When, when it comes to Dylan. There's no lie about that. Is there any chance for Dexter Williams to make the roster? What's the old, what's the old uh, Jerry Glanville quote when he's talking about Favre, when Favre was a third-string QB? We need, we need two plane crashes and a car wreck, and you're in. I think that's Dexter's chance of making the roster. Is that four fingers of tequila? No, that is sweet black coffee. Five-star review on your Apple podcast today. Thank you, Molly. Thank you very much. Uh, those of you who may have missed it, I finally only took me, what, years to uh, make sure that these here chats are now on iTunes. They've been on Spotify, been on a lot of different platforms, on the iHeart platform, et cetera, but they have not been on Apple. They are finally there. Just search Extra Cheese, uh, Cheese TV, Aaron Nagler, you'll find it. Um, and then that feed includes both these da Packers Daily Chats and any extra cheeses I do. So look out for that. If you're an Apple person, I'm sorry it took so long, but it is there. And yeah, while you're there, please give me an old five star for old time's sake. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. I still think Valdir has a chance to be back given COVID. I very much agree. I would not doubt that in the slightest. You saw how well he performed last year when Brian Belago went out. Yeah, I do not question for a second that his number is uh, on the emergency contact list for one Brian Gutekunst. Uh, games being canceled in MLB, seven inning doubleheaders, NFL acting like they're ha they'll have a normal season. Uh, Michael, have you seen the NFL facilities? Nobody's acting like it's going to be a normal season. Not one human being involved with the NFL thinks or is acting like it's going to be a normal season. I get it's all cool to be cynical, but... Uh, this is their profession. This is their life. This is what they're doing, literally to put bread on the table. To be so dismissive about that and say that they're just being cocky or arrogant or whatever you're trying to insinuate there is nonsense. I'm sorry. I know I get touchy about this, but I know these people. I know a lot of them. And, you know, I think the most public example of it, Wes Hotquits. I mean, he's back in Lambeau Field wearing a mask, responsibly, I might add. You know, he's got a little boy at home. He's got a family, you know, but he's going to work, doing his job to entertain you. And that doesn't even get start getting on the players, the coaches, personnel people, 
all the office people, et cetera. Nobody in that building thinks they're just going to go into 2020, have a regular season, call it a day. Not one of them. So don't be so dismissive. Uh, going to kick the tires on any free agent wide receivers. Sorry if you covered this already. I'm a little late. Shawnee, no problem. Um, I doubt it. Maybe somebody like Taylor Gabriel gets a call, though I doubt it. I would. My hunch would be they would look to trade maybe you know a day three pick for some wide receiver none of us have ever heard of. <laughs> um, but that would be the Gutekunst way. But I doubt that he makes any kind of major move to augment the wide receiver group. I think they're going to stick with what they got. Mm. Wes, I like your tweet with my face in it. I was very honored. Wes is my second favorite 16 year old right behind JK Scott. <laughs> mm. uh, what's the big deal with Jordan Love getting an end locker? Saw a couple people complaining about it because people will complain about anything. You know who else has an end locker? Aaron King Rogers. People are stupid, man. Thoughts on Griffin? Uh, I'm all for it, man. There's a video on this here channel. Literally titled, Should the Packers Make a Move and Sign Everson Griffin? Go watch it. Thoughts on John Lovett? Acting! No, um, he's really intriguing. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the Packers claimed John Lovett a basically an H-back from Kansas City that was cut... Earlier in the week, the Packers claimed him on waivers. He is a former quarterback with Princeton, and he is an absolute unit. My God, you watch his highlights. This guy trucks over people. He's a big dude. Um, he was having a really good camp for the Chiefs last year, and then uh, got a shoulder injury after the first preseason game and was put on IR. Uh, he is intriguing, man. Uh, and he is the kind of player that, again, not a lot of people are going to talk about, know about, think about, but he is the exact kind of move. That's the exact kind of move that Gutekunst will make rather than trading for a wide receiver. That's a guy who's going to be able to line up at fullback, halfback, help you on special teams. Versatility. We keep hearing it from Gutekunst and Lafleur, all about doing, being able to do lots of different things, which he certainly falls into that category. Um, I'm really intrigued to see. Now, who even knows if he gets you know, past the first week of camp? Who knows about his shoulder, et cetera. But – He's an intriguing player, and he's another H-back type that uh, Lafleur can kind of throw all over the formation and use in a lot of different ways. So I'm excited to see him on the field, definitely. <laughs> We're ready for A.J. Dillon to run through a motherfucking face. Dan, that's what I'm talking about. I'm glad we're on the same page. Uh, thoughts on the linebacker we drafted. If you're talking about Kamal Martin, I really like him. Um I do. I've said often here in the off season, I worry about the interior lineman getting up on him quick and his ability to shed those blocks. Um, we've, we've lived through the Oren Burks experience and that never got better. Uh, I hope Kamal is able to kind of traverse the wash, so to speak. And if he is, I really like his athleticism. I think he's a ball hawk. I, I think he can roam sideline to sideline and be a disruptor. And I think he's got really fluid hips. He's able to drop into coverage. He can do everything that's going to be asked of him in this defense. Can he get off a block? Now, that's my big worry. But, hey, like I said, well, put him on the field. Let's find out, man, because everything about him excites me. It's just that is the one reservation I've got. And we've seen. I mean, Warren Burks can do all that, and I got excited about him, but he never got better at being able to get off blocks. Now, maybe it magically happens this summer. I will be very surprised, but that's the kind of, you know, difference it makes between college and the pros when people get so excited about these guys and their college tape you get to the pros you got grown men getting up on you not letting go that's a whole nother world so i hope he transitions to the nfl better than burks did and i like his potential but as with most of the rookies i gotta see it on the field oh michael michael still going my point was 345 Park. Oh, okay. Well, if you're going to you're gonna bash 345 Park, I'm all in. I'm kidding. I know people there, too. Doesn't seem to be considering any contingencies for canceled games. How do you know? Are you in the boardroom? Are you on the Zoom calls? 
this is the problem with the internet and Twitter and everything today is that because someone sees a tweet or reads a report, they think they know everything. They've got the exhaustive overview of everything going in, on inside, in this case, 345 Park. You don't think there's people at 345 Park thinking about canceled games? Seriously? Ser seriously. R really? Really? Man, just stop typing for today. Type, put yourself in a timeout. Is Big B really Jamal Williams? <laughs> I, I think we found it. I think we've cracked the case. Of course, the goat is the goat. I love it. Um, I see people talking about Jace being the number two tight end, but Big Bob has some really nice tape from last year. How do you think the tight end second and third plays out. Garrett, I mentioned it earlier in the chat. I think Jace is the eventual tight end number one. Um, I think Tanyan definitely is kind of being slept on because he missed so much time last year, et cetera. But the thing to remember is Tanyan was definitely tight end two during camp last year. Um, they didn't utilize him a whole lot during the regular season, and then he got hurt and he was gone for a while. But, um, yeah, I think it'll be a mix early on in the season. And then as the year progresses, Jace will take over. Now, a lot has to happen between now and then. We have to get on the field and who knows what happens, either injury or COVID-wise. But to me, that's how I see it playing out. <laughs> Jamal Williams is not getting traded. What the hell? Why are people like this? Big B, people just put their fantasy manager hats on. They start wheeling and dealing. Now, would the Packers listen if someone called about Jamal Williams? Probably but I don't think they're actively going to go out and look to trade him. <laughs> I pay my cheese at TV fine, straight cash, homie. Thank you, Michael. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, Katie, did Rogers really reach out to you about the tequila? Yeah, he really did. He's a good dude. Krista, I will cherish every single game they play, right? Man, if I get one Packers game this year, I'm going to be elated. I'm all I do. I can't even describe how much I need it. I need it to happen. Tomorrow's headline: Jamal Williams traded to Chicago Bears. All right, I got to shut this down before we give Big B a heart attack. All right, thanks a lot, everybody. Uh, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for making Cheesehead TV part of your Packers routine. Let's see what awaits us in Packerland today. Uh, if there's any big breaking news, I'll be back here on the channel with some extra cheese. Otherwise, make sure you're hitting like. Hit subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family. Cheesehead TV, we are devoted to Green Bay Packers fans worldwide. Thanks a lot, everybody. Have a great day. Go Pack Go.